Hi, my name's Howard Jones, and first of all, I'd like to welcome you to my online painting channel. Uh, well, here in South Wales, like most of the world, we're stuck in this, the middle of this dreadful coronavirus lockdown. Um, so I thought perhaps in this lesson, I'd show you how I go about uh, my own art for therapy. It's not a million miles away from how I would normally do a warm-up prior to commencing a painting, so it should have some ongoing benefits for you. Uh, so if, like me, you're in need of some um, creative distraction, please stay with me for the next few minutes and I'll show you my approach. So start by getting in a substantial drawing. Uh, don't be mean with the um, pencil work, but don't overdo it either. Um, you don't want sort of too many heavy uh, pencil lines in your painting at the end that you can't erase. I'm starting here with a mix of my three colours, um, which was quinacridone yellow or quinacridone, quinacridone gold uh, and lamp black. Um, notice that my brush strokes are very deliberate. They I can almost count them each time I make contact with the paper. I don't stay there too long. This is the introduction of the third colour, which is light red. A beautiful, beautiful colour. Um, it's a sort of earthy red, so it doesn't give you that false, artificial, sort of um, cadmium type sort of colour. Um, all I've done here, just to sort of give a bit of weight to the shapes, is I've added the lamp black, uh, more of the lamp black, that is. The quick, fast brush strokes, incidentally I'm using uh, a half inch flat brush here. I think it's a synthetic um, fibre brush, which really allows you to um, bully the brush around. It's nothing worse, really, than being afraid to um, use a bit of brutality with the brushwork. I think that's what causes us to, to half the time to paint so tentatively. So don't be afraid to push a brush, what I call push a brush. I'll do more on this um, brushwork technique in later videos. Um, so I'm just letting the foreground wash dry off a little bit here. Um, it's probably a little bit too much water at the moment for me to get anything to stick. As you can see, it's sort of, um, it's all draining in a southerly fashion. So I've left the foreground to dry off a little bit. Um, it was really too wet to get any substantial um, strength of paint to stay there. So I've gone back into... Uh, again, a darker mix, it's simply the other colours um, with more of the lamp black and I've gone in around the trees just to give them some three-dimensional form. Now I can sort of play around, I'm just pointing out here as you can see the, um, the fact that my focal point, and it's a focal point for several reasons, it's got it's the only place in the painting where you can see the uh, the light red colour. Just making a pencil mark showing you that it's off centre, it's to the right. Um, and we'll do more on um, the rules of composition later. So, on to the second uh, quick warm up. Um, I will pull this image up a little bit in a moment so you can see what I'm doing. but. These little lozenge shapes that I'm making at the moment are my negative space areas. They're really important if you want interest in your paintings. So um, I'm going to have a sort of limbed tree, you know, a tree with limbs, as opposed to just basic blocked in shapes for the hedges and bushes. So this is going to be a sort of specimen tree, if you like, to the left. Treating this painting the same way as I treated the first painting. So um, I'm making the shapes of the bushes first. Same colours, quinacridone gold, lamp black, and you'll see me use a little bit of the light red. The 
This is a bit of a trick of mine. I'm just pointing to the edge of the brush there, where I turn the brush around and use the handle, and I become it becomes a drawing uh, exercise, if you like. So if you put enough juicy, rich paint at the base of these hedge shapes, you can use that technique. You can use the handle of the brush to draw from the little well of paint that uh, congregates at the bottom of the shape of the tree. This is me putting in the uh, tree trunk. Um, as you'll see, I'm using uh, horizontal brush strokes. Uh, it's all so far been done with the flat brush. There's no um, linear work as such from something like a rigger brush. I'll do that later. But I want to get as much as I can painted with the flat brush. This keeps things, um, keeps the brushwork to economical levels, um, not overworking it. So I'm just using the same technique. I'm turning the handle around, pushing some lines out um, in the top of the tree. So I don't get too involved in the upper canopy of the tree, the smaller limbs at this stage. I'll leave that till a bit later. So back into the um, shapes for the hedgerows. Uh, use the flat of the brush. If you like, you can sort of start counting your brush marks. Um, I'm pressing down here. That gives a unique um, texture, or a, a, a different texture, at least. Um, so, um, just push into the lower areas again, turning the brush around, using the handle for drawing. Keep reloading the brush. Don't rely on one brush load to paint everything for you. Um, it's all about uh, lots of juicy, fresh paint. Uh, this is one reason why I use tube paints and not pan paints. So moving steadily along. That's a bit of a dry brush mark. If you push the brush load to the point where it's running out, you'll get these lovely broken um, deliveries onto the surface of the paper. And it just brings a bit of life, light and sparkle to an otherwise flat shape. So I'm reloading and we'll move to the right hand side, finishing off this area of hedges and notice that I've kept quite a heavy line at the base. It's a sort of shadow line on the ground. I've gone in here with uh, almost pure lamp black. And by putting the lamp black dark shapes at the base of these tree shapes, you give the trees form. Um, so I'm going to go back in in a moment and deal with the upper limbs of the tree. So I'm just making sure that I'm happy with the strength, the tonal strength in certain areas. These little sort of lozenge line shapes I'm placing at the moment are to tell me where I want my upper limbs off the top of the tree. So I'll change brush. Um, I've loaded up a rigger brush. My hand's in the way at the moment. But um, notice that I'm holding the rigger brush right at the back end near the... Uh, top of the brush. This um, allows some life um, to uh, go into the brushwork. If you if you choke down, I call choke down on a brush, in other words you hold it near the metal ferrule, you actually kill um, the performance of the brush and you'll get those very static dead um, results in the lines. And hold the brush lightly in your hand uh, this is how I get my reflections. I've picked up um, a, a, a one, in, one inch um, wash brush, and I'm not, there's, nothing, there's no paint in the brush as such. What I'm doing is, if you act quick, quickly enough, you can make contact with the, um, the well, the little reservoir of paint that's at the bottom of these tree shapes and bush shapes, and just pull it down. You've got to be a bit careful to, to pull these um, brush uh, directions down as vertical as possible. 
if they start going a bit left, a bit right, or slightly diagonal, it's not going to look like reflections of water. So just relax. Relax from the shoulder. You're painting from the shoulder, not from the wrist. I think a lot of people make that mistake is that they say that they can't, they're not very good at um, creating a straight line, whether that be vertical, horizontal, or di diagonal. And I think half the time it's because we try to paint, sat down, we're in, crouched over our work, and all that's moving is probably the wrist. You need to sort of, if you can, if you're... Um, if you're able to stand up as much as you can um, and paint from the shoulder, allow the whole arm to make the vertical movement. If you can't stand up to work, um, then at least push your easel, push your painting arm's length away from you. That will give you a, a, a similar, a very similar um, uh, uh, freedom, if you like. So here I'm just putting in the ripples to show that this is water. With all that vertical movement that we've just created, you need something horizontal to tell you that this is a flat surface. I'm doing this by going back to the one inch flat, and I've squeezed the fibers of the brush that becomes almost blade-like on the end. Um, each time you uh, do a pass, in other words, create a ripple, you should, with your left hand or your opposite hand, at least, um, squeeze that those fibers ba back to reshape the flat brush to a like a blade shape again. Um, do that each time. So it's it's one pass for a um, a lift off for the ripple. Squeeze that paint because the brush will have picked up the paint and squeeze that out um, and do another pass. So really, um, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this and um, see you at the next lesson.